as an artist you have to define that pretty pretty early that like you want to do this thing yeah. because it, you have to kind of stick to it to build any, like anyone can be an artist and they, people can be an artist for a a period of time that that person who yeah. sits on the couch for an hour that that's that person now is sitting there watching tv on the couch right um but how often are you that artist uh def can define the the remainder of your identity yeah and like when i would spend more time playing world of warcraft i am now a world of warcraft a person who plays world of warcraft not an artist yeah um but there's also a balance there because if you want to be an artist you also should have more experiences and if you have more experiences then you can um have a larger toolbox to pull from for whatever you make yeah. so um that gets really granular and it's, it just becomes this vicious loop yeah. vicious cycle of like well i'm an artist now but uh when i'm bored and tired i'm gonna go watch tv and i think right. that's okay i think there's a balance there because like if you locked yourself in the room and made a, a ten thousand paintings per year then you would have you you would probably become unhealthy you, you wouldn't be eating a whole ton because all you're doing is painting or whatever else and it just doesn't that's not a fulfilling life yeah cool we're good uh, to go man hello brother okay so for everyone listening this is my brother john jags knee um and you will also notice the production quality of this has, has shot up significantly including the audio and the video and and everything else he is a video he, he, uh, he's a videographer and he's using his super expensive setup to, to help me trying to do this a, a, as a test so don't expect this in the future it's <laughs> i i cannot i cannot even afford the, uh this kind of stuff but uh, uh thank you for taking the time i appreciate you doing this of course very excited. i am very excited to be here i'm glad mm. that we can actually be in the same city for once yeah, yeah absolutely well okay so uh the way i start these things is the purpose of this is not to talk about uh how to become an artist how to necessarily make money or get a job or any of that kind of stuff it's more about the why of doing it you know mm -hmm. and for you you know you uh have kind of blazed your own path in terms of starting your own company uh doing a lot of freelance work um essentially like making a living out of being a creative person and a lot of people, as far as I can tell, they don't necessarily want to strive for the crazy, like, high-end, like, big blockbuster movies or AAA games or any of that kind of stuff. They just want to make a living off doing art, you know? And I guess that's part of the reason I want to talk to you is, like, um, you know, how does somebody go about, like, being a student, being, like, a young student or being in a job that they don't necessarily like and moving forward in a way that enables them to, like, pursue more of the things they want to do? That's a good question. It's so my passion with like what I do is I remember being 13 years old, 15 years old and seeing the World of Warcraft cinematics yeah. and the Halo cinematics and be like, can I swear? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I see those trailers. And I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. That's all I want to do with my life. Right. But to get to that point, I need to go to art school, the traditional standard, go to art school, learn drawing and learn life drawing and painting and sculpting and very traditional mediums and then go work at a studio and eventually build up to a creative director role and I respect that overall process i am missing a lot of steps and i am actually like, as a, a in my career like i'm currently learning zbrush now because i'm realizing my my basics and traditions are is not there yeah. but i have this like desire to get to that point and i'm just like the joker from batman the dark knight i'm just like a dog chasing cars yeah. sometimes i get distracted and i'm like i need to, le need to learn this thing need to learn that thing but i know that my end goal is to get to like be able to do a Blizzard cinematic or no. a Halo cinematic or something and be part of that team. Right. So um, I guess the reason I do what I do now is because I, I love all parts of it and I know that everything that I learn will eventually get to that point because to create an epic short form film narrative, whether it's 3D or live action, you need to have all the skills, a little bit of everything to just yeah make it right well and I, I think a lot of people they like 
everyone who's ever been a career, like every creative person I know that started out as that initial love for something that kind of seems mundane, you know, like whether it's World of Warcraft cinematics or PvP videos or, uh, you know, Modern Warfare 2 uh, kill cam videos and stuff. And like, it's cool moving forward, seeing how those people that were hyper obsessed with that kind of stuff, making that stuff as, as you know, essentially as hobbies, mm -hmm. you know, they're becoming these like high end professionals. They are the ones making those things, you know? And I, I think when it comes to like somebody leaning in and like essentially choosing what they want to do for the rest of their lives, like, you, you know, maybe you choosing to do World of Warcraft cinematics was a smarter idea than like becoming an accountant, you know, like you have a degree in finance, right? Uh, economics. Yeah. 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 Right. And it's like, um, you know, it, on paper, like choosing to, you know, make these videos seems sillier than like pursuing something in, in economics, you know, but it, it's worked out in a way to where it's like you can take care of yourself. You're able to, you know, pursue this stuff like, you know, to spend essentially your entire day doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of doubt on whether you can make it as an artist or not, because yeah. a lot of traditional professions cannot fathom what the skills or the deliverables are as an artist like in ec economics class our homework assignments were go through this stata data set develop a regression model based on these this data and try and predict this outcome with this equation and then make a report on that that sounds like a lot of jumbo mumbo jumbo random stuff but to an extent that's a, it's a deliverable we need to go through the first step what is, what are we trying to answer then find a way to solve that problem and then solve that problem as an artist we have to do that same exact thing we have to interact with the client or even if, if we're making an artwork for ourselves we have to be like okay what is what is this thing we're trying to manifest so you have to discover that and using like the term discovery phrase makes my skin crawl i i hate a lot of that sort of language but it's necessary we have to go through like oh a, a brainstorming session to just really discover like what are we trying to make and then we have to be like okay we have this concept how do we create that yeah. and then after we determine we think about how do we create that we write that down pre-production and we develop a recipe recipe and a plan right. and then we execute it in the same way that's it's the, the same process in any other medium it's you you what Realize you have a problem, find out how to solve the problem, go try and solve the problem. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately for commercial work, it's a little bit more cut and dry like that, where when you are trying to help a client sell a product or something, it, it follows that very strict recipe. <clears throat> but when it comes to like personal work, it allows you to explore more. So yeah. there's, a, there's, there's a push and pull there with right. how much process you have in an artwork versus how much freedom you have. Yeah, well, I, I feel like having the ability to even pursue what you're doing takes a, a little bit of soul searching and figuring out, like, you know, how do you get to a point in yourself spiritually and have the confidence in yourself to ask for $1,000 a day for working on a video product or ask for twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to do a video or to do something on something, you know. Um, I know plenty of people who, there are these great technical artists and stuff, and it's getting like at a certain point it gets harder and harder to manage to do the thing that they love because the logistics of like living your life, like dealing with healthcare, dealing with mental health, dealing with exercise, having a relationship, all that stuff compounds into this massive thing. And then managing it in the way that you just explained it, like breaking it down into small parts becomes harder and harder, you know? Mm -hmm. And to me, it seems like the way somebody um, can move forward and like the, to me, the only way of, moving forward and becoming a successful creative person is that ability to break it down into like step A, step B, step C until it's, you know, like uh, Z, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, that's an, as you were saying that, it reminded me of um, one of my mentors who I met at um, this event called Camp Mograph. Uh, his name is Joel Pilger and he's was a former, um, founder and owner of a motion motion design animation studio i can't remember the name i'm sorry joel um pixar no it's not that okay. uh but they did a lot of amazing commercial work and in his talk with me he was defining what risk was and if effectively when you command a high rate like that you're inheriting risk from the client and yeah. 
the, the client has this thing that they're investing in with some specific outcome, they are paying a premium rate to make sure that they are going to get that desired outcome. Yeah. So I have discovered that thought process within the last two years. But prior to that, I had no shame for chart just saying high numbers because in economics class we are taught very early on that money is arbitrary there, there is no like true value for anything other than what our brains perceive it as yeah. and obviously you can't blanketly say hey i'm going to charge ten thousand dollars for a sketch on a napkin yeah. but like i'm sure someone could if they're Some, talking to the right person yeah, yeah, I, I mean, there's that famous uh, Picasso story where yeah. uh, he, you know, a, a waiter asked, like, hey, can you do the sketch? Uh, and then they asked how much it was after he spent a minute doing it. And he's like, oh, like five million dollars. And he's like, oh, you did it in 60 seconds. And it's like, no, that's took my entire. But um, it, yeah, and that's, that's arbitrary. A very, but yeah. yeah, that's a very common story and I, I i do reference it it's kind of like beating a dead horse like going back to that story over and no. over i know i think oh, so many artists refer it and i think it's a it's a very good story and a good representation of how we should price our work because when a client comes to you to solve a problem how it, how important is it to that client to solve that problem because not yeah. every industry is equal so you say toyota or apple or some big movie studio where they're going to have millions of eyes watching their ad they need to make sure it looks good so they can help sell the product or something of that sort yeah. so it's a, it's a big risk so therefore they're going to pay a higher rate versus if you're doing like i'm speaking as a videographer content creator using a camera if i'm working with like a, a local restaurant doing like a sizzle video on how to make a sandwich or something yeah. at the sandwich shop they're only reaching what 200 customers per day on a good day on the weekend maybe yeah so i can't charge them ten thousand dollars for a commercial but it would really help them so it's all relative and pricing artwork it gets really hairy yeah. um where i start to really break it down for my pricing if i'm if i'm work, want to work with someone it would really come down to how how difficult is this client uh going to be for me like how, how hard is that their ask and how much creative freedom do i have because if they give me a ton of creative freedom and they just want me to make something i i'm happy You're like sure i can bang something out for a thousand bucks no problem i'll come in i'll film for an hour or so all i need and i will give them a a really good product that I know will help solve their problem and I think it'll, it'll look good great but if there's another client project where it's like okay we need to make sure it has these brand guidelines this length it achieves these story points like okay we're, we're adding more rules that I have to adhere to so I need to make sure I follow them and if I don't follow them it's gonna make you miss your goals so I need to charge a higher rate to accommodate that I know this is getting really abstract, but <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but but again, it, I mean, um, the flip side of that, where you see people charging, you know, a hundred dollars for a week of work just because they think that them getting to do the work is part of the payment, you know, because mm -hmm. they love it so much, whether it's an illustration or, or you know, doing a video or, or whatever, you know, and I, I think um, a big part of becoming, like, like I, I don't think money matters that much, but surviving matters and be able to pay rent matters and stuff and thinking about this stuff in terms of just the practicality of being an artist you know charging enough to like live where you want to live live around your family like mm -hmm. it's expensive to live in southern california so are you willing to pay at least like fifteen hundred dollars a month for rent and if so like how do you make that function practically where you're not living paycheck to paycheck you know mm -hmm. and the answer is is like you know what, what we're talking about it's like actually looking at the economics of it how much how much it would take for you to justify charging that much and then actually charging that much. Right. You know? That's so I'm really glad you were, we moved over this discussion because I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I'm working on some content about pricing and how much should artists make. So if you were to, as a freelancer, let's just assume you're a freelancer, you're working 187 days per year and that is taking two months off, including weekends and holidays like federal holidays so you, you, yeah. you also get some sick time some vacation time so you take two months off per year that's 187 days 
if you were to um, do a break that down into hours, I if my math is correct, I think it's 1,600 hours yeah. in, in a year. If you were to make the bare minimum, like just above the poverty line, it's about $30,000 a year. Yeah. Now, 30K can go pretty far in Mississippi and Minnesota, but if you're living in LA, that's nothing. And it's yeah. about $20 an hour, making about 30K, working 1,600, 1600 hours per year. Yeah. Likewise, if you were to work uh, the, that same amount and chart and make a million dollars a year, your hourly rate would have been six hundred and twenty-five dollars per hour. Yeah. That's <laughs> also not possible for most people. Yeah. So, like, what is a happy medium? Like, what is a good income? I believe that thirty k that should be the universal basic income, and that's an economics concept where it's like, okay, you live in this country, it'll it'll cover your food, your basic shelter, like no luxuries, water, and electric like heat. Yeah. And after that, it's just like, that. that's all you get. Yeah. I believe that 70K is a good rate to make a good living for a solo artist. And the reason why I say that is if you live in Mississippi or bumblefuck nowhere, you're going to live like a king with 70K. But if you're living in L.A., you're going to probably live with roommates in an apartment and... Bah, have not a ton of luxuries, but you have just enough to cover some other, other additional luxuries of life that I think are actually necessities, even though in the modern age it's harder to achieve those. Those luxuries are savings for retirement, saving $6,000 per year for a Roth IRA, saving a couple thousand dollars per year to go on some vacations or make some big purchases, and also have enough time off per year to enjoy your life. So how do you get an artist to that point? It's really hard to quantify that because a videographer or 3D animator, they can command a rate of like 350 to, I've seen up to $2,000 per day, and studios don't bat, bat an eye. But I was talking to my partner, my Amanda Barker, who is an illustrator, and she could, like, it would be almost impossible for her to get even close to $300 a day as an illustrator, like full time just doing illustration only in her style. So why do illustrators with years of training get the short end of the stick and who I picked up a camera and started doing art in 2013 with video content on YouTube, I can say 500 to $1,500 per day depending on what I'm doing. Like, how is that fair? I don't know. Well, yeah, I think the logistics of this is, you know, it, I don't think it, it is ever fair, you know, and the other side of that is... Um, it's all about like choosing the market that you will be successful in to the degree that you want to be successful. And, you know, th there are plenty of like get rich books and economics books that talk about how to like it. They say like the advice that I pull from that stuff is, um, choose the lifestyle you want and choose the number, choose the amount of money you want, and then just strive for that. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, the idea of, uh, becoming wealthy or any, earning a ton of money is so arbitrary and nebulous at certain points that it's hard to even think about getting there without having like a, oh, I need to make 70000 or I want to make 150000 or, or whatever. And um, I think the um, beautiful thing about being an artist is that uh, like having it be something that you'd be doing no matter what, even if you didn't have to worry about money, you know, that that's the goal ultimately. And um, I also don't believe that uh, as an illustrator, you do, you have to be limited to potentially three hundred dollars a day. Maybe in like the in like the studio sphere, but if you're you know making like being a YouTuber or being like a fine artist or whatever, you can make a lot of money. It's just a matter of like marking that as something that you could even potentially do. You know, to to me that that's actually the most important part about being a, a person in general is like choosing an identity and like sticking by that and um you know allowing yourself to even uh gi like giving yourself the benefit of the doubt that it might work you know mm -hmm. yeah that comes with a lot of confidence building and i think that's something that a lot of just people in general regardless of it being art or fitness or just hobbies they just don't believe in themselves as much and yeah. it sucks because a lot of the time the world is also to an extent beating us down like if you go back 
60 years, just having a job was enough to buy a house and a car and all these things. And in today's day and age, most of the people who are 30 and under have a hard time buying a house. They're their car is not perfect they, yeah. it's it's harder to make ends meet so we compare ourselves to our parents who they have a they had a house they had kids and now it's just like all right well i'm 30 and i can barely like granted i'm i i'm doing very well for myself but i, I know if i were to have a, a child yeah i that would financially cripple me yeah so that's an interesting notion of confidence because to what degree do we measure success? Yeah. And I, I think that goes into what you were saying earlier, where you have to choose your lifestyle and target that, and yeah. eventually, if you stick to it, you'll get there. I think one of the really dangerous things about that is our phones and social media. We start see, seeing so many other options that we just start getting distracted. And yeah. I'm a case in point of that because I'm learning ZBrush on top of doing C Cinema 4D and sony camera dslr yeah. event videography and i do a lot of stuff yeah um so this world is very distracting and i think that does have an impact on our confidence levels yeah well yeah again I, I think it goes into a deeper spiritual aspect of just having an identity in general where again going back to the world of warcraft music uh, video stuff like you really can't choose what you value you know like, again, it's a smart idea to become a lawyer, become a doctor or something, because you just make more money. You know, it's more stable. People want doctors. People don't necessarily want or need World of Warcraft videos, you know. But um, choosing that as something that's like, I'm going to fucking do this, you know. This is something that I'm going to spend my life trying to pursue, like working on World of Warcraft cinematics. Like, uh, having those, like, little wins as a child, you know, leads to potentially having, like, you know, eventually Steven Spielberg making Jaws at like 23 or something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the more somebody's able to lean into that version of themselves that's like creative and curious and brave, the more likely they're actually going to be able to find that thing to where, like, yeah, sure. Like people nowadays, it's very hard to buy a house, have kids, buy a car, like have a stable career. And that's just the way it is. And it fucking sucks. And I wish it wasn't that way. But, you know, at a certain point, like, you either have to, uh, like, you're, you're either going to dwell on what you don't have or you're going to be able to, like, think about it and be like, how can I uh, try and solve this problem for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's deep because how do you cultivate that creative creative muscle and how do you stop people from trying to smash it out? Because I'm... I'm Everyone knows someone who has a hobby, but they they were focused on the career that was going to be the most lucrative, the most stable, the most safe. And then it just comes to this inflection point. It's like, okay, well, I have these things. How do I find time to be creative? And then depending on their lifestyle, they might have a kid. They might get a dog. And yeah. it, it changes their priorities. And... Being creative, I think, is is should be universally available to people. It should be an option. How people experience that is very subjective. Yeah. And what makes people happy? Like, there might be a point in which I suddenly change and I get a dog. I would get a French bulldog named Bulgogi. And I suddenly stop using my ZBrush time so I can go train that dog. Yeah. And priorities shift. Um, but I've already cultivated that creative muscle where it's like okay i'm willing to dive in and play with this once said dog is trained um but some people don't have that yeah um and that's a uh hmm. well yeah i was talking to a friend about this i recorded a podcast yesterday with uh ryan pallet and he's like a character designer and okay. stuff just stuff for like apex legends and oh. stuff and he was saying that it's like he, you know, like doing everything you can to just love the process of it, you know, like love the moment to moment, just doodling around, like mm -hmm. making art and creating something that's like better than uh, playing video games and eating Oreos, you mm -hmm. know, th that's the goal, you know, is to like um, cultivate like a childlike five-year-old mm -hmm. mindset where you're mm -hmm. like, oh man, I'm going to playing with Legos or something. Yeah, yeah, like add a rocket launcher to this tank yeah. guy and yeah. stuff and it's going to be fucking sick, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I, I'm really glad you said that. And um, I, I do want to circle back and say that, like, I know I've said a lot about pricing and art, but, like, I fucking love what I do. Like, yeah. it, when I'm in Cinema 4D and I'm animating uh, a product, doing a spin, and I get that, like, perfect transition where the camera angle looks just right and the depth of field just looks creamy and bokeh -y. it just, I'm like, fuck yeah, this is great. And it's always super fun to be behind the camera or sometimes in front of the camera and just like making something and you see that final image and just like, fuck yeah, this is going to be awesome. Um, and I think, God, this is going to sound a little cringy, but like I, I stopped, I pl was playing World of Warcraft over the last holiday and during that time I stopped doing all of my extra, like extracurricular creative time. I would just do my work, play, relax and play games. And I think there's a balance there because I, I've since unsubbed from World of Warcraft, and I will probably go back in the summer when I have some free time. But since then, uh, since I have been unsubbed, I've dived in more into ZBrush, and I'm modeling a tank right now. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm figuring this out. This is starting to feel awesome and right. And I am starting to bring my camera out to hang out with friends, and I'll take some photos for friends. We're at Ren Fair, and then I actually have time to go because I'm not playing World of Warcraft or I uninstalled TikTok and Instagram, so I'm using that time to like process those photos and it makes so many other people happy. And I think there's a, this, like like you said, the childlike instinct that you suddenly find when you're making an artwork and you're like, oh yeah, I wanna add this sword, but I wanna add a dragon to the base of the hill because that's just gonna look sweet and be really cool for this character or add a bazooka to yeah. the character yeah. or whatever. Um, and then I think there's also some, something about being generous and being loving and caring and like wanting to put something out into the world that would just, that didn't exist there that just makes the world inherently better. So like yeah. my other hobby right now, because I've stopped using social media as much and stopped playing WoW is I'm, I'm on a huge bread kick at the moment. And because of that, I'm like going through the process of like, all right, well, the crumb structure of this bread is too tight and I, I want those big bubbles. How do I go figure that out? In the same way right. that someone learning illustration, they'll draw a hand or a head, which I can't do. Um, but eventually, every single time they do that, it's going to get a little bit better every single time. Yeah. And eventually, there's a point in which you, and this is why I felt this is going to be cringy a little bit, it's like you, if you can reduce the highs or detox your dopamine a little bit so you get to a point where your your artistic endeavors are actually like f emotionally and um physically fulfilling to your soul yeah. that's when you really start growing yeah. as an artist but that only happens when you're giving yourself the time and the space to do that yeah well i think it's when you're taking creative risks yeah. and I, I think from a more a philosophical point of view it's like um when i'm feeling more nihilistic and more just like cynical about the world i'm playing more video games because i'm seeing the idea of playing a video game as like i'm at least going to have some dopamine doing that whereas when i'm going out for a run trying out a new hobby doing something new creating a piece of art there's a risk that i might fail you know mm -hmm. and that risk of failing sometimes becomes so overpowering that you can't create you know it's like the risk of trying to create a drawing or a zbrush sculpt or a piece of bread and failing you know you're like oh i'm i'm absolutely gonna fail you know mm -hmm. so it's not even worth trying so that uh process of slipping into playing video games you know potentially alcohol drug like any vice becomes a little bit easier because mm -hmm that inability to see what you're doing as inherently meaningful. Right, you know? right. Yeah, that's um, that's a really good point. And I'm going to go back to economics class. Uh, there's multiple curves that demonstrate risk. There's risk preference. Where people who are generally risky, they end up re receiving the greatest rewards over time. Um, people who, um, on average, uh, sometimes it gets... Some people do not. Uh, it also depends on the types of risk they're taking and yeah. all that. There's risk avoidant, and they generally do pretty well um, over the long run, but their their gains aren't... They, they level off. It's a upside-down logarithmic curve. Um, and then there's um, risk neutral, which is just a straight line. It's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, we'll just make average gains. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> problem is most people 
and, and it's not a bad thing. Like I, I'm generally pretty risky, but Amanda, who I love very much, uh, she's a little bit more cautious. And th- 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 again, that's not a bad thing. Like if you want to take an approach to the stock market where you're not throwing a bunch of money at Dogecoin or whatever, uh, that's perfectly fine. Throw it in the, into index funds, and it'll you will make eight percent gains over the fifty years, and you'll be perfectly fine. But I threw five hundred bucks at Dogecoin, and it tanked and it's like oh well that sucks oh well um but eventually if you take enough risk if you throw enough darts at that dartboard it's gonna hit something theoretically right theoretically because i'm gonna preface none of this is financial advice (laughs) (laughs) uh, uh, for for the sake of legality yeah Yeah, no yeah okay rewind that (laughs) this is not financial advice (laughs) do not throw money at cryptocurrency index funds yeah. Or anything, you should go read the book. I will teach you to be rich. Um, well, again, going back to the existential, like the more that you, it, it's it's my definition of what God is. Like the idea of God is the ability to see meaning in nothing. You know, mm-hmm. it's like being able to look at a tree. I use this analogy a lot, but uh, look at a tree and see like, oh, that's a spear, or that's uh, a place where a, a tree house could be, or that's mm-hmm. you know something to build a house, or it's just a tree, or it's decoration, or mm-hmm. or anything that a tree could be, right? right. But it's everything and nothing depending on the person. Mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. like your own ability to add subjective value to something. And the fact that it is anything specific is like a miracle, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it could be everything or it's nothing. And the fact that it's an oar to go paddling mm-hmm. instead of a, you know, a uh, like a plank of wood to build a house is like, that means uh, there there's like a specific meaning and purpose to that tree that's manifesting itself to you Mm -hmm. that's not manifesting itself to everybody right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and the only reason it manifests to you in any specific way is like your specific uh just idiosyncrasies that you had as a child or Mm -hmm. some like some uh, some essentially identity that was assigned to you without Mm -hmm. any input from uh, yourself essentially you know Mm -hmm. Mm um and I, i i guess uh the more that someone has the ability to pay attention to those little like hits of meaning in their life, I think the more likely, again, they're going to be able to see that meaning. You right. Know? Right. And if that comes with a lot of soul searching. Like yeah. I, some of the best artists who I've met, um, they're ones who travel a lot. They're ones who like go and experience things a lot and they're, they're willing to take risks. And because of that, they have this large, uh, storage of experiences that they can pull from yeah um it's as if they're building their own internal data set for their art creation yeah. versus ai just fills fills the void there anyways yeah. we don't have to get into that but um when it comes to building that toolbox of references it you, you just have to go take risks like it's a lot easier to stay home and play world of warcraft or hearthstone uh during a staycation during the holidays or you could just drive around the country yeah. like you in a van and you get all these crazy experiences yeah. like that's something i i'm really proud that you have um and i i don't i'm not able to do that because uh i i've purchased a ten thousand dollar computer and like yeah. all this stuff it's it's no longer like economically viable for me like I, I could theoretically like sell some of it buy a van do exactly what you do but it doesn't suit my goals yeah suit my needs well and, and i think that's totally okay you know and i think part of being a person is like as a human being i think this is something that most people run into at some point in their lives where they want to be a thing they want to be either artist lawyer or whatever mm-hmm. and then the world tells them you can you shouldn't do this you should do this like um, and just based off, like, you have to pay rent, you have to earn money, you have to kind of compromise on what you believe mm-hmm. to a degree in order to just survive. Right. So um, the hard part about doing all this stuff authentically is, like, balancing the need to earn money and compromise in terms of the stuff you want to create and mm-hmm. doing the stuff that you actually truly want to be doing. Right, you right. Know? Um, yeah, and that just comes down to, like, where do you want to live? How do you want to live? Like, what are, what are the bare minimums yeah. to make that standard um, cause like I, I was doing the math and for me to hit my like absolute bare minimum amount of like, I work a good amount during the year. I'm also able to save for retirement and all that. 
is about 76k yeah. um that also put money into my Roth IRA and yeah. be able to buy like a, a new camera yeah. every other year or so and like reinvest back into my business. Yeah. I make more than that. And the the reason why I'm aspiring for more is because I know that I, I want to get to a higher point. I want to grow into this, n this newer point. Like where I'm at right now, 76K like hits, ticks all those boxes and it's, it's pretty yeah. awesome, but I want to do bigger projects with more people. So... I, I I feel this desire for more, but do I actually need it? Yeah. No. Um, so I that can also get like carry over into other artists because like I don't need my lifestyle to improve anymore. I just want my work to get better at this point, and that's yeah. kind of where I'm at now. Where it's like anything on top of what I make, with hitting those bare minimum thresholds, it allows me to um, get to that end goal. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like the challenging part about all this stuff is that there is no correct or incorrect end goal. Like, mm -hmm. the, as I'm getting older and the more mature I'm getting, the more I'm realizing that there's no wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's dependent on what your subjective values are and what mm -hmm. you want personally. Like, do you want the approval of your parents? And maybe that means earning more money or not, you know? Mm -hmm. And depending on how important that is to you, you have to sacrifice one thing or the other, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I, I think... Uh, as somebody is getting older, the uh, like the more that they're willing to sacrifice for the things that they truly care about, the more successful they're going to feel. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and I think no matter what you do, a sacrifice is going to be made for you if you don't do it intentionally. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, the, uh, that's an interesting point. Have you read the book uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Yeah, yeah. The second habit: begin with the end in mind. If you if you don't make a plan for yourself, someone else will make a plan for you, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, and I, I was literally writing about that in, um, I'm writing a book. Yeah. Um, have I told you that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, writing about that and I was referencing that in my book because it's very important to give references and stuff. Um, and I, I think like as an artist, we have the choice of either like, following a script and like just doing things very robotically or we can yeah. do it um based on our own choice our own free will like how do we explore these things and yeah. that is art in and of itself where you get to explore and be a a a free bird i suppose well i i, I mean i again I, I don't know if i believe in the idea of free will you know Again, in the sense that you don't choose your gender, you don't choose where you're born, you don't mm -hmm. choose your friends, you don't choose how much money you make. Like, you know, if you're born in South Saharan Africa, your identity is probably, com like, what you care mm -hmm. about is completely different, mm -hmm. you know? Your physique, your genetics, all this stuff. Like, most of who you are is completely out of your control. Right. And, you know, if you were born in, like, 17th century medieval or 17th century, like, uh, you know, New England farmland mm -hmm. maybe your version of what you're doing now is like being a trader selling mm -hmm. wool or something you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um and like again i i think it's part of the reason this stuff is so complicated is because i think that we're all multiple people and we have all like in the morning you might really want to go for a run and exercise mm -hmm. and then an hour later you're like on the couch watching tv you know right, right. and then two hours later you're like i don't know thinking about going to Peru, but then an hour later, again, you're, like, playing video games, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, you're different people at different points in the day. Oh, yeah, you know? for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I, sometimes I don't even know who that person is, where it's just, like, I, I, I think that's, as an artist, you have to define that pretty, pretty early, that, like, you want to do this thing, yeah. because it, you have to kind of stick to it to build... Any, like anyone can be an artist and they, people can be an artist for a a period of time that that person yeah. who sits on the couch for an hour that that's that person that's sitting there watching tv on the couch right um but how often are you that artist uh def can define the the remainder of your identity yeah and like when i would spend more time playing world of warcraft i am now a world of warcraft a person who plays world of warcraft not an artist yeah um but there's also a balance there because if you want to be an artist, you also should have more experiences. And if you have more yeah. experiences, then you can 
um, have a larger toolbox to pull from for whatever you make. Yeah. So um, that gets really granular. It it just becomes this vicious loop, yeah. vicious cycle of like, well, I'm an artist now, but uh, when I'm bored and tired, I'm gonna go watch TV, and I think right. that's okay. I think there's a balance there because like. If you locked yourself in the room and made a, a ten thousand paintings per year, then you would have, you you would probably become unhealthy. You, you wouldn't be eating a whole ton because all you're doing is painting or whatever else, and it just doesn't. That's not a fulfilling life. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, I, I I think the weird part about all this stuff is how common this problem is. Uh -huh. you know, this, car, this problem of balance, whether it's like Matt Damon or um, us or like people I've. Like, everyone I've ever had on my podcast has talked about that problem of, like, um, you know, they feel like they're pieces of shit. They have, like, a horrible portion of their career where they feel like they're losers and it was never mm -hmm. worth it. Or, you know, they're finally done in this town, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, the commonality of that, ide like, crisis of identity of, like, oh, people are finally figure out, figuring out I'm a fraud, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I think for anyone listening to this, it's like, whether you're successful or not, the... Um, feeling of not feeling like you're good enough or not feeling like you're making enough money or working on big enough projects or having enough followers or anything is like, that's a universal problem, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, th that's like what you're signing up for as a creative person, right. essentially, right. you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the downsides about being creative is because you're not only judged for your output, like when you do this state of regression model, there is an answer. Yeah. But when you're an artist, that answer could be an infinite number of things. So then it becomes very easy to self-judge yourself. Like, is this what the client wants? I don't yeah. know. And yeah. then you just start self-wallowing on yourself. And yeah. it, then it comes back to, like, how do you measure success? Is it that you got the paycheck at the end of the project? Right. Is it that you got to work on a, on a in an industry that you love? Is it that the client project went really well and you were able to have time to have meals with your girlfriend or boyfriend yep. or whatever else like well and, yeah. and it's all things at once right it's mm -hmm. it's the bad thing and the good thing at once you right. know and I, I think my idea of like original sin in the bible is is like somebody's ability to like the thing that separates us from god the idea of like an all-powerful being is that mm -hmm. we exist in time mm -hmm. like god exists like now five seconds from now a million years from now Right, uh, like three thousand years ago, so he could be the painter, football player, doctor, lawyer, right, creator, like everything, right. So, mm -hmm. by the nature of you choosing to work on your projects, you're not spending time with your girlfriend, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. there's a sacrifice there, right? You know? Right. So inevitably, you have to sacrifice enough things to where people start getting into fights because you're not doing everything that you're supposed right. to be doing, right? You know? Right. So that that's like you're you, you just can't do everything. You, yeah. You, you yeah. have like, you know. Uh, that, that to me is like the original sin is right. that you, you aren't everything, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I guess the point of that is more of like practicing forgiveness for yourself and other people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, that also might just come down to like the stereotypical, but I think it's valuable of setting boundaries for yourself as an artist. Like you, even though you, like I'm a freelancer and I'm like, I try and work no more than seven hours a day yeah. and that's like well, what about eight hours a day what about nine hours a day like let's be real the human brain can only effectively function for about four and after that you lose a lot of steam and yeah. the actual product is not good so like i'll have four super solid productive hours and then i'll have three of like loose i don't give a shit maybe i'm working on this a little bit but it's like 50 percent effectiveness or i'm just catching up on email or yeah. I'm paying my credit card bill or something. So then the remainder of the time I'm going to the gym or I'm baking bread or something yeah. because, um, like, how do you measure when you've made it? Well, it, well and I think for, like, anyone that might be listening to this that they, like, work at, you know, Starbucks or they work at Walmart and they're, like, doing the I am going to work a job and then on the side I'm going to do my art until I get good enough until I can earn it like actually make it it's, it's like um the uh like for, for the person that really wants to get to the point where they're doing it full time mm -hmm. like um if i were to say any advice to those people it would be like um like do what you're doing but also continue to just take risks you know? yeah yeah like the uh the, the, there's a book called the art spirit by robert Henri. it's like a famous mm -hmm. painting book okay um and he was talking about how like 
you should be a master at whatever level that is. Whether you're a complete beginner or you've been doing it for 40 years, mastery is a mindset. It's not an idol. It's not like a final goal. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you like um, get to a point to where like you could do a bad drawing masterfully, where you're mm-hmm. completely in the moment and you're taking advantage of all your faculties in order mm-hmm. to do that drawing. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are bad, experienced draftsmen who they aren't using all their faculties or half-assing it. They're kind of phoning it in Mm -hmm. and they're, you know, uh, just doing it because they feel like they have to or something, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And to, to me, it's, it's actually preferable to be the person that's giving their all badly than the person that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. always. Cause it's one of those things where you you can see when someone's trying, but you really can, when they're like really putting their best foot forward, they're really like, either proud of what they did or they know that it's not good but like they don't know how to make it any better than what they're doing now but they're yeah. really trying they're not just like stroke 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 on paper or yeah. dropping two keyframes in an after effects timeline because i'm gonna get a little nerdy and yeah. after effects and it's just like just linear keyframes no one gives a shit no one's gonna know it's a corporate yeah. car video um and i'm like come on there's levels of there are parts of the artistic process that shows that you're you're trying and really yeah. putting your best. Well, I, I, I feel like that that extends itself not not just to d- being like creating stuff. It goes to like relationships and yeah. to friendships and to you know like how you mow the lawn or take out the garbage. That mm-hmm. Like there's always a better thing you could be doing and mm-hmm. um, being open to that and letting go of your ego enough to be like, yeah, there's a better way of me, you know flushing the toilet or something, right. you know, and mm-hmm. being like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. or not, depending on what your values are. Mm-hmm. And, um, Opportunity cost. Yeah. yeah. When you do this podcast, do you like, w- w- I've, I've listened to like one or two episodes while I've been working. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. I don't listen to every That's, single episode, cool, but how do you normally like, what do you want people to take away from it? Most it, of the it time? It's more of, it, it's like looking at a person who is doing something creative or, or just a person in general. And like, uh, looking at that person with, with a little bit more empathy, you know, whether it's somebody that's really far along in their career that is really well known and respected, or somebody that is mid level or low or whatever, and being like, oh, that person is also struggling with anxiety and depression and mm-hmm. figuring out, like, how do I, you know, make money as an artist? How do I get better? How do I survive? How do I, you know, reach my goals, essentially, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of podcasts and a lot of like educational things are missing that empathy. It's like Mm -hmm. approaching people from the, like I am the teacher, you're the student Mm -hmm. versus like I'm equally as stupid and dumb as everyone else, you know? And Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to like figure it out in my Mm -hmm. own way, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry, I tuned out because I wasn't sure if those people were. Oh no, it's it's fine. It's part part of the, part of the, part of the sketchy band podcast. If someone was yelling at us, that'd (laughs) that'd be like sick. (laughs) (laughs) I did tune out for a second there. Yeah. Um, and also just to give you a quick update that has 10% battery left. Uh, and that's also in the red now. So Okay, can, do you want to wrap it up? We can, do a, we can do a wrap up or we can do a pause. I also kind of have to pee a little bit. Okay, do you want to go pee? Yeah, let me go yeah. pee. Okay. Hey, we'll... uh, we're back, everybody. I had to pee. I had to pee too. And uh, batteries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so again, we're using his fancy camera setup, so... It is not hooked up into the short power of the van. Yeah, and then it was very spur of the moment sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, 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 I guess to go more specific into your question, like why do I do the podcast? It's more for that, like, um, you know, life is hard. Being successful is fucking hard, and yeah. everyone's mm-hmm. life sucks to some degree, you mm-hmm. know. And mm-hmm. sharing a little bit of that, like, uh, wow, like how? I don't think anyone's life necessarily sucks more than another person's life Mm -hmm. you know like Mm -hmm. subjectively like everyone has moments in their life where they feel like everything is hopeless everything is lost and Mm -hmm. like in the same way like a five-year-old when they drop their ice cream that's the worst thing that's ever happened to them (laughs) you know so that's like of course they're gonna like scream bloody murder and you know um and uh like i'm not diminishing other people's suffering people definitely suffer more than me but Mm -hmm. Um, for anyone that might be listening to this, the point of this is like, uh, it, it, a lot of it is for me as well, just to be like, oh, uh, talk to people and understand, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. how does somebody manage to get up every day and choose to be a creative person? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I've thought about that as of late. And there are times in which I'm like, why do I do what I do? Because I, 
worked at Cryptozoic, yeah. and I fell into making board game videos because I was making World of Warcraft videos. Yeah. And unfortunately, and I would love to hang out with him at some point, they let Marcus Pyan go. So they right. were just like, Jags, you're up. Let's go. Figure it out. Yeah. Then they hired Deacon. He taught me the basics of After Effects. I was making some stuff for YouTube for my Warcraft channel as well. And then um, it, does, it went into that. But I got into making... YouTube content because I wanted to like flex my own ego on World of Warcraft and highlight mm -hmm. make highlight videos and do food vlogs and stuff because I just wanted to be a YouTuber yeah. and like I have a YouTube channel now and I have a good amount of subscribers and it's slowly growing and but it and, and it's like would I be happier if I was just doing food content yeah would I be happier just like talking about fitness stuff right. instead of motion graphics, cinema 4D after effects, but like there are times when I when which I do an animation, I'm like, fuck yeah. That yeah. turned out great. Yeah. So Well and again I guess going back to the identity thing is there are gonna be moments when you're when you are the after effects guy and moments when you're the food guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And both are gonna look at the other person and be like, that guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, yeah, that guy's yeah. wasting his time. I, I will say I'm I'm very rarely bored. Yeah. Because I'm like all right, today today I'm I'm on bread mode. I want to yeah. make bread. Or oh, you know what? Today I'm World of Warcraft. Like I, you, yeah. you could almost define me as bipolar. Yeah. And I say that, and I not diminishing people who have that disorder, but there are times in which I'm like hyper depressed yeah. and hyper upset with myself, or like really hard on myself, where I'm struggling with body dysmorphia, yeah. or like, fuck, I. <laughs> was supposed to go do cardio but i didn't I, yeah. I did the gym but i didn't do enough i didn't do my cardio and therefore yeah. it's going to slow down my my cut and it's gonna it's just like th that endless sort of like i i'm never happy yeah and i th think that's a very universal feeling as an artist where it's just like you are never I, I i would say as a person too mm -hmm. you know it's like uh, I, everyone has heard the story of somebody making a million dollars a year and then just not enjoying it you mm -hmm. know not mm -hmm. like they'll be on top of the world of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, leader of their career, leader in their social circle, whatever. And they'll be like, this isn't, this isn't it. Yeah. You know? What would you do with a million dollars? Uh, uh, well, a question I ask everybody is, would, what would, would you be doing the same exact thing you'd be doing if you had a billion dollars? And A billion or a billion? billion. Okay. Well, a billion, the reason it's a billion is because a billion is enough to, one, never worry about any finances ever again. Right. Like, personally, you could never spend a billion dollars. Right. You know? Right. Even if you tried. Right. I bet I could. No, but but it's mm -hmm. like within reason, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. Like house, car, like it, it would it would take a long time to yeah, spend a billion dollars. Yeah. Well, and once you have a billion dollars, you're probably the most successful person in your social circle, right? Right. right. And then you're also probably like, um, the person that everyone goes to for help, mm -hmm. and it's like it, it's it checks all the boxes of like ever becoming the most successful, or like mm -hmm. whatever, famous, whatever, and like if you had zero uh, external validation factors where it's like you didn't have to worry about the validation from your parents or friends or girlfriend husband boyfriend whatever um and you just you know could do whatever you want 100 mm -hmm. percent, no external motivations like do you still do video editing you know mm -hmm. do i still draw do i do mm -hmm. whatever and i'm trying to live my life in the way where i would be doing as much of what i could mm -hmm. if i had a billion dollars whether right. it's trying to build a life where i can travel host a podcast mm -hmm. You know, like that's a, that's a good question because well, like there are the moments that are most emotionally fulfilling for me is when I'm doing like a PR in the gym, yeah. where I, I feel like physiologically elevated, where it's just like I I cannot explain this feeling that I have, but I feel elated and yeah. excited. I also have a similar feeling when I'm doing like video editing, and I yeah. find the right music and the visuals and the audio just sync up perfectly, and I'm like, God, this feels right. Yeah, and I, I, like there are points in which I will like start to cry mid edit because I'm like this is perfect. It feels right. Yeah. Um, those are the and the last example is like when I make something perfect in the kitchen where yeah. it's like this bread has the the exact crumb structure I want. It is delicious. Everyone who I made it for is loving it. Like I love that feeling and i am addicted to it like those those three things food fitness and some some level of filmmaking three f's i've thought about um girlfriend's here nice um not sure if you can see no, I can. um 
when I have those three feelings together, or not, it's very rarely does it happen together, but yeah. when I have that feeling in a day, I am just like, today was a good day. Right. Um, and as you get better, it's sometimes harder to have those feelings, yeah. but you build up the habit enough of doing it so that you enjoy yeah. it. Well, I, I mean, I was talking to Stan about this. Like, I had Stan Perkopenko on my podcast, and he's obviously very successful. He has, like, 3 million subscribers now. Right. You know, he's, right. like, very well-known in his community and all this stuff. And he was saying, like, once you get it, you get bored, you know? Mm -hmm. Once you earn a lot of money or you have a bunch of followers, it gets the, like, you get tired of it. It's just mm -hmm. not, not it, you know? Like, you get it, and you're happy for a day, and then after that, you're like, oh, okay, now what, you know? That's so interesting because I'm currently making a YouTube video for my channel that's about cooking, like how to spatchcock a chicken. Yeah. And I was thinking about this in the shower today of like, I don't want to make a YouTube channel that is I'm Jags the filmmaker. I want to make yeah. a YouTube channel that's like, hey, let's all hang out and just like talk about food and fitness and maybe making some shit at some point. Yeah. And I just think that's cool and fun. It's it's almost like I want to build be like a glorified streamer. Like yeah. that's like what Asmin Gold or Soda Pop and, yeah. and all those people do. They just have a, this community around them and they just do shit. They yeah, yeah. they do whatever. They go to Walmart and people just watch it. Yeah, yeah well, and for in a sense, it's, that's what I'm trying to do too, where it's like I'm trying to have artists on, trying to have, like mm -hmm. I had Rock Climbers on recently. Right. I, I had Obese to Beast, Drunk Glock yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And I'm just trying to like, you know, do stuff that I'm interested in. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, like I, I think the problem with being like an artist is having that identity of like, oh, I'm a painter, so that means I can't go dancing. Or right, I can't right. become a singer. I can't be yeah. doing all this stuff. And, um, you know, some people have to have that identity in order to like have that business where mm -hmm. like if you're a Western painter, it's hard to be like really into Skrillex because right. Western, right. you know. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity cost with life and it's yeah. just hard to balance. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and I, I, again, I think it, it always comes back to forgiveness for yourself and yeah. for other people because, you know, just by the nature of somebody choosing to do something, they're not doing something else. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. because of that, inevitably, you're like, oh, man, I wish I just did that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, like I uh, go through phases in my own life where I'm like, oh, I wish I did that instead of this, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. when I'm in a better mental space, I'm more like, oh, yeah. That was a mistake, but I'm fine with it. Right. You know, I'm good right. with it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm glad I made the decision because I am the person I am today. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, that's just eventually you start learning how to forgive yourself enough to a point where it like, and that just comes with age. Like yeah. when you're when you're 20 and you fuck up, you're like the, the world's over. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can never recover from this. And it's like, yeah. dude, you got like 60 years at least ahead of you. This is yeah, yeah. fine. Well, and again, it goes back to the, you know, when a five-year-old drops their ice cream, yeah. that's literally the worst thing that's ever happened <laughs> to them, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, again, I like from a religious, spiritual point of view, it keeps getting higher and higher. Like eventually mm -hmm. your parents die. Eventually, like you have friends die, mm -hmm. cancer, all this stuff. And um, to you, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to you. But that's from one sense, your own perspective. Like I'm not, again, I'm not trying to diminish that suffering. Like right, it is there, right. but like, I think no matter what, um, there is something around you to be grateful for and to be happy about. Right, and right. the real part about being successful is being able to like see that amazing beauty of everything around you in mm -hmm. spite of mm -hmm. the reasons not to. You know, yeah, death yeah. Death of friends, family, parent. Yeah, yeah at what point do you let something take you down yeah, and never right. get up again and it's just like the answer is it's something might something might yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there might be something at some point that there are like things. like investing in too much in dogecoin yeah yeah don't do that yeah yeah well or or you know a play in that you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, um <laughs> um but I, you know we have these like uh I, I think in some sense we're living on in like a like a glass pyramid where mm -hmm. um often like people aren't as strong as they think they are because they have so many other things that prop mm -hmm. them up that allow mm -hmm. them to focus and allow them to you know mm -hmm. focus on the things they really want to be caring about right you know right um and uh i i, I guess i think at every at, at a point in everyone's life again there is that moment where it feels like that 
glass structure has shattered. And, yeah, you know. yeah. It's like, no, that's a crack, and it's going to get filled, and yeah. maybe it's not a glass... I mean, maybe it's not a glass pyramid. It's a... something that's less brittle than glass, but still shatterable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And eventually a bomb goes off, and it just destroys it completely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's yeah. morbid. Yeah. Uh, well, most it, of the time, it gets filled in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, 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 have you ever seen a Steve Jobs' uh, commencement speech address thing? No. So he, he talked about how, like, it's always worth it to take a risk because everyone ends in the same place, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you know you're going to die. Like, yeah, you start with nothing yeah. and you end with nothing. Yeah. So, like, again, the only valuable thing is the destination. Yeah. You know? It's like yeah. the moment that we have together as brothers right now, mm-hmm. if we're recording this, is something that we're going to be able to watch in 50 years. Yeah, you know? yeah. Which is like, uh, we're both going to die. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like... You know, this as an experience is the value. It, it, that's a valuable thing. Oh, you know? yeah, for yeah. sure. And I, I think the, one of the things I, I wanted to thank you for is one asking me. I think this is going to make mom happy yeah. to, like, watch this and be like, oh, there's my two sons. Like, yeah. it goes back into, like, creating things for the world that did not exist. And it's going to make someone happy. Well, it, but, it, it also might, somebody else might be like, oh, look at those two cringy idiots. <laughs> you know? And it's like, it's both things, well, man. Fuck <laughs> them. I don't yeah. care. Well, and I, I think that's part of the, uh, like thing about being an artist is that you have to create in spite of people not liking your work. Yeah. You know? That's also true. I, there is, I, so I posted this tutorial yesterday on how to do particles in unreal. And, I know I'm not a game developer. I do. I've never worked at a game studio. I do not have the best systems, but I've found systems that have enabled me to sell client work that includes Niagara particles in a way that is organized and makes sense for myself and my workflow. And because of that, I'm like, this is valid. Yeah. I'm going to make a tutorial on this. And I'm like, but it's, I'm not using the user parameters correctly or something. And it's like. Yeah. Like, you've used Unreal Particles because you worked with Tyler at Crypto, or whatever, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You yeah. probably might have had a different system better than me because they you are were actually in a video game pipeline versus I'm just like, fuck it, that looks cool. It's in a folder. It's named correctly to the scene. Yeah. That's all I need for my clients. My clients aren't going to open this. I don't care. Particles. Yeah. Looks pretty. Um, but someone might just shit on it and be like, well, you didn't do it this way. Game studios would never hire you. It's like, yeah, yeah I'm not trying to be a fucking game studio, dude. Yeah. So there's a, a threshold in which, yes, you do have to just like block out the noise, try and help people as best as possible. And if you're blatantly wrong, correct it. But like... Yeah, well, I, I think approaching it from the perspective that, you know, you're going to have failures. You're going to mm-hmm. do something badly. You are going to like... Like, I think that, you know quality of someone's ability as a creative person like the actual skill mm-hmm. has a lot more to do with how many failures they have than successes mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like for every success you somebody might have they might have 15 or 20 failures of like mm-hmm. oh that didn't work that was dumb that was stupid mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and like people have experiences where they like oh they get fired they get mm-hmm. you know like i was laid off at proco recently you mm-hmm. know and that's something that i've been talking about as well as like mm-hmm. as like a loss of identity and a loss of like mm-hmm you know, judgment or something, but it's, it, I, I know it's not, but it's also like, inevitably that stuff happens, you know, mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. like a, yeah. Yeah. And eventually you, you pick up and yeah. it's awesome. Uh, before we end, I also just want to remind you thumbnail, make sure uh, that we get something for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, uh, uh, recently I've just been taking like a, a screenshot of the person talking. Oh yeah. yeah so, so I was just going to like do this for a second. <laughs> Yeah, just yeah. To... I'm, I'm just going to do one of you laughing, honestly. Okay, fine. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah uh, would you like to wrap up? No, no, no. I, 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 was, I was just thinking that because yeah. whenever I'm using my YouTube videos uh, or doing my YouTube videos, I'm like, fuck, I yeah. totally forgot to do a pose for yeah. like two seconds. Yeah. Um, but I, sorry, that was a complete super ADHD. No, no, it's totally it fine. just like, no, I want to help make the content. Yeah. Because I know what it's like trying to make content, and you're just like, "Fuck, yeah. my flow is broken." Because I didn't yeah. get this one thing, and I have yeah. to go fix it. And yeah. yeah. So. Um, but yeah, we could wrap up if. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm fine wrapping up. I'm good wrapping up, man. Cool. Uh, well, how should people follow you? And if they want to learn from you or anything, how should they? Uh, John Jags knee on everything twitter i don't use twitter all that much instagram i uninstalled it but i will check periodically like once or twice a week just to like go through messages and see if what other people are up to um youtube john jagsney uh my website is jags.tv um 
jags.tv and then um j o n no h so yeah nice. uh yeah that's cool. that's it awesome man cool thank cool. you should we should we do you have like a ritual to I, end i do that you do that yeah yeah everyone every <laughs> single one i've done that yeah and then i'll say oh i'll cut it there and then i'll cut it there so yeah there we go oh, no i want to cut it there okay fine that's cool i mean i, I do have a fireplace that we, we could have used oh, whatever okay i'll, I'll just uh, okay I'll, I'll say that to the end Thank you.